We're now in the initial stages of the next revolution. The question is, who's involved in this race to perfect quantum computers? Everyone. You physicists, you scientists, you guys are know-it-alls, right? How will we compute in the future? Well, we have to go to the next level. We have to be able to compute with the atom itself. Google's quantum computer, Sycamore, has been making waves in the tech world and for good reason. In 2019, it achieved something called quantum supremacy, which is a fancy way of saying it did a task so complex that the world's most advanced classical computer would need about 10,000 years to complete it. Sycamore did it in just 200 seconds. Now, let me ask you a question. Does Mother Nature use zeros and ones, zeros and ones? Imagine trying to solve a puzzle that everyone says will take an eternity and you do it over a coffee break. That's the level of achievement we're talking about here. This wasn't just any task. Sycamore was verifying the randomness of numbers produced by a quantum circuit. It might sound like a party trick, but it's a core demonstration of what makes quantum computing so revolutionary. It can tackle problems so big and complex that they're currently out of reach for our conventional computers. A quantum computer, I think, will basically change how we do everything. Okay. Everything will be in a different level. Now let's talk about what makes Sycamore tick. It's equipped with 54 qubits, which are the quantum version of computer bits, though during its moment of fame, one was taking a break, leaving 53 qubits to handle the computation. These aren't your regular bits, they're made from superconducting circuits and can be controlled and read out electronically. What's really cool is how these qubits are arranged. They're set up in a two-dimensional grid that allows for high connectivity, making it easier for them to interact and solve complex quantum algorithms. However, quantum systems, including Sycamore, are a bit like high-performance athletes. They're incredibly capable, but also prone to errors. <laughs> what is not a challenge? Everything is a challenge, yeah. The error rate of quantum gates, which are operations on qubits, is critically low in Sycamore. This is important because it means Sycamore can handle the intricate dance of quantum computations without stepping on its own toes too often. One might wonder what this all means for the future. The type of problem Sycamore solved opens the door to future applications in material science and even complex system simulations, areas where classical computers struggle because of the sheer size of the computational space. But what about the energy it takes to run something as powerful as Sycamore? You might be surprised to learn that quantum processors like Sycamore are quite energy efficient, especially when compared to their classical counterparts. The operations within a quantum computer governed by the principles of quantum mechanics don't require the energy-intensive electrical currents that classical computers do. Most of the energy goes into keeping the quantum processor in the right environment rather than the computations themselves. When we compare the energy footprint, classical supercomputers like Summit can gulp down around 10 megawatt of power. In contrast, the direct operational energy use of a quantum computer like Sycamore is significantly lower for the computational tasks themselves. However, if we consider the whole system, including the cooling, the story gets a bit more complex. Even so, the energy efficiency of quantum computers points towards a more sustainable form of computing, especially as we refine the technology further. Continuing our journey into the fascinating world of quantum computing with Google's Sycamore, let's dive into one of the most critical components of its operation, the cooling system. The heart of this system is something known as a dilution refrigerator. These are not your average refrigerators. They use a mixture of helium-3 and helium-4 isotopes to achieve temperatures close to absolute zero. That's less than 100 millikelvin or a chilling minus 273 Celsius. The science behind it, called dilution refrigeration, takes advantage of the unique thermodynamic properties of these helium isotopes to cool the system effectively. This ultra-cold environment is vital for the qubits to maintain their coherence, allowing them to perform quantum operations without the interference of thermal energy. The sophistication of dilution refrigerators makes them akin to engineering marvels. Imagine creating a place within our labs that's colder than the vast expanses of outer space. These refrigerators manage to do just that, becoming one of the few places in the universe where such extreme conditions are artificially maintained. 
This isn't just for the sake of breaking records. Operating at these frigid temperatures is essential for reducing noise and quantum decoherence, which in turn preserves the qubit's quantum states, ensuring the accuracy and reliability of the quantum computations. But what's truly remarkable is the environment within these dilution refrigerators. The quantum processor, along with its qubits, is suspended in a carefully engineered environment that shields it from external magnetic fields, cosmic rays and even stray photons. This isolation is crucial. It's what allows the quantum processor to preserve the delicate quantum states of the qubits during computation, akin to performing a high-wire act without a safety net, where even the slightest interference could have significant consequences. As we look to the future, the quest for even more efficient quantum computing continues, with researchers exploring new cooling technologies. The goal here is to reduce the energy requirements of quantum computing systems further. Through advances in material science and low temperature physics, we might see refrigeration methods that allow larger quantum processors to operate at these critical low temperatures with less energy, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in quantum computing even further. Now let's touch upon how data is stored in a quantum computer like Sycamore. Unlike classical computing, where data is stored as either zeros or ones, quantum computing uses qubits. Qubits can exist in a state of zero, one or both simultaneously, thanks to a principle called superposition. This ability to be in multiple states at once allows for the representation and manipulation of a vast amount of information, with a relatively small number of qubits showcasing the power and potential of quantum computing to revolutionize how we process information in the future. As we delve deeper into the realm of quantum computing with marvels like Google's Sycamore leading the charge, it's hard not to be captivated by the sheer potential of what lies ahead. The achievement of quantum supremacy, where Sycamore outperformed the world's most advanced classical computer in a specific task, is just the tip of the iceberg. It introduces us to the quantum advantage in the unseen, a theory that suggests quantum computers might unlock solutions to problems so complex and vast that they're currently beyond our imagination. Imagine standing at the edge of a vast ocean of computational possibilities where quantum computing could redefine fields like cryptography by both challenging current security methods and pioneering new forms of secure communication. Drawing a parallel from history, Sycamore's achievement is reminiscent of the Wright brothers' first powered flight in 1903. Just as their invention opened the skies to new possibilities, Quantum computing promises to unlock new dimensions in computation, encryption, and problem solving. Yet much like the early days of aviation, quantum computing is in its nascent stages, facing significant hurdles and errors. However, just as aviation evolved to revolutionize our world, the potential of quantum computing to transform the digital landscape is immense, marking the dawn of a new era in technology. But with great power comes great responsibility, and the advent of quantum computing brings a spectrum of risks and dangers that warrant close attention. At the forefront is the potential for cryptographic security breakdowns. Quantum computers, with their ability to run algorithms like Shor's, pose a threat to the cryptographic systems safeguarding our digital world, including banking, communications, and online information. This capability to decrypt currently secure data underscores the urgent need for quantum-resistant cryptographic methods to protect our digital infrastructure. Moreover, the risk to data privacy cannot be overstated. The prospect of quantum computers retroactively decrypting sensitive personal, financial and national security information is a stark reminder of the potential for privacy erosion. This scenario raises alarms not just for individual privacy, but also highlights the risks of corporate and state-level espionage in a quantum computing age. The global race towards quantum supremacy also brings geopolitical considerations into play. As nations and corporations vie for dominance in this emerging field, the balance of power on the international stage could shift dramatically. The entity that first achieves a fully operational, large-scale quantum computer will gain unprecedented advantages in intelligence, military capabilities, and economic power, potentially reshaping global security dynamics. Lastly, the introduction of quantum computing is set to revolutionize algorithm development and artificial intelligence. However, this new paradigm also brings with it the potential for unforeseen vulnerabilities. 
The unpredictable nature of quantum AI algorithms could lead to risks in critical decision-making processes, particularly in areas such as autonomous vehicles and weapon systems, where the stakes are exceptionally high. As we stand on the brink of this quantum computing frontier, it's clear that while the possibilities are boundless, so too are the challenges and risks. Navigating this landscape will require not just technological innovation, but also ethical consideration, global cooperation, and a commitment to developing safeguards that ensure the benefits of quantum computing are realized while minimizing its potential dangers. Every time I meet a scientist, I ask them the key, key question. The most important question of all. Why are we here? We may be able to answer that question with a quantum computer. We want to calculate our universe. Why, why are we here? Quantum computers hold the potential to revolutionize various sectors by performing computations that are currently impractical or impossible for classical computers. However, the same capabilities that make quantum computers so promising also introduce several concerns that could be considered terrifying in certain contexts. Imagine being able to crack the toughest safes online with a brand new kind of computer. That's the fear with quantum computing. The CIA is very much concerned about it because these quantum computers can crack any known digital code. These machines use the strange laws of the quantum world to solve problems that would take regular computers years, even centuries. And one of their biggest threats, our online security. Here's the thing. A lot of the encryption keeping your data safe relies on difficult math problems. Like factoring giant numbers so big they'd take a regular computer forever to crack. But quantum computers could zoom through these problems in seconds thanks to something called Shor's algorithm. This is a recipe for disaster. Encryption systems like RSA, which keeps your online shopping and banking info safe, could be wide open. Scary, right? But it's not all doom and gloom. There are other encryption methods like ECC that use different math problems. The trouble is, quantum computers could crack those too with some tweaking. So, what does this mean for our online world? It means we need to prepare for a future where the old ways of encryption might not be enough. Scientists are working on new methods, called quantum-resistant cryptography, to keep our data safe in the age of superpowered computers. The switch won't be easy. It's like upgrading all the locks in your house at once. But it's important. We need to be ready before quantum computers become powerful enough to crack the codes that keep our information hidden. Think of it like the code-breaking breakthroughs of previous war times. Quantum computing could be a game-changer, but this time for cybersecurity. The race is on to develop these machines, and whoever gets there first could have a huge advantage. So there's a race, a race to see who can get the first quantum computer to put on the marketplace. It's a complicated situation, but one thing's for sure. The future of online security hinges on outsmarting these superpowered computers. When it comes to quantum computing, IBM has been a real trailblazer. They were there at the beginning, funding research into this mind-blowing technology way back when it was just theoretical ideas. They saw the potential of using the strange rules of the quantum world to build superpowered computers, and they haven't stopped pushing the boundaries ever since. Here's a glimpse into what IBM has done to make quantum computing a reality. First, they invested heavily in the groundwork. They funded research into the basic principles of how quantum computers could work and what kind of problems they might be able to solve. This wasn't just about building a machine, it was about understanding the entirely new way these machines would process information. IBM also realized they couldn't go it alone. Quantum computing is complex and requires experts from many different fields working together. So they teamed up with universities, research labs, and other companies to combine their brain power. This collaborative approach has been key to making big leaps forward in this rapidly developing field. But IBM wasn't just focused on theory. They knew they needed to build the actual machines to make this a reality. One of their big breakthroughs was developing these things called superconducting qubits. These are the building blocks of quantum computers and they're like tiny quantum switches that can be flipped on and off. Keeping these qubits stable and working together is super challenging, but IBM has made huge strides in this area. They've also been busy building bigger and better quantum processors. 
It all started with just a few qubits, but now they're up to machines with over 50 qubits. Each new generation is not only bigger, but also better at handling the delicate quantum calculations. There's a catch though. Quantum computers are error prone. To make them truly useful, they need a way to fix these errors. IBM is working on quantum error correction, a fancy way of saying they're figuring out how to make these machines more reliable. It's a tough nut to crack, but it's essential for building large-scale quantum computers. Beyond the hardware, IBM is also writing the software for these machines. They're developing quantum algorithms, which are basically special sets of instructions designed to take advantage of a quantum computer's unique abilities. These algorithms could help us solve problems that are impossible for even the most powerful classical computers today. One way IBM is making this quantum knowledge more accessible is through a project called IBM Quantum Experience. It's basically a cloud platform that lets anyone play around with real quantum computers. Pretty cool, right? They've also created open-source software tools called Qiskit, which gives developers a leg up in building quantum programs. Unlike your trusty laptop, quantum computers are built differently. They crunch data using the strange laws of the quantum world, and that means they operate on a whole new level. Let's see how IBM's quantum computers stack up against our everyday machines. First up, energy consumption. Here's the good news. At the quantum level, these machines are pretty frugal. They use qubits, not transistors, and that keeps their energy needs way down compared to classical computers. The flip side is they need super cold temperatures, think close to absolute zero, to function properly. Keeping things that chilly requires a lot of energy, but it's a necessary evil to make the whole quantum magic work. The real benefit of quantum computers comes when they tackle specific problems. Imagine needing to solve a super complex puzzle. A classical computer might take forever, but a quantum computer could zoom through it, using way less energy in the process. This efficiency comes from their ability to do tons of calculations at once, thanks to a special property called superposition. Here's the catch. Quantum computers are still under development. They're not ready to replace your laptop just yet. For everyday tasks, classical computers are still the champ. But for certain problems, like simulating complex molecules or cracking tough encryption codes, quantum computers have the potential to be game changers. It's like having a super-powered tool for specific jobs. Quantum computers are like super-powered research tools, opening doors to incredible discoveries in medicine, materials science and artificial intelligence. Imagine simulating the building blocks of life or designing new materials with mind-blowing properties. That's the kind of future quantum computing promises. Here's a glimpse of the exciting possibilities. In medicine, quantum computers could accelerate drug discovery by simulating how drugs interact with our bodies on a super detailed level. This could lead to faster development of new treatments and cures. But quantum computing isn't all sunshine and rainbows. There's a flip side to this powerful technology. Because these machines are so good at crunching data, they could also be used to create highly sophisticated weapon systems or even develop new types of threats. Scary, right? The concern is that these technologies could fall into the wrong hands or be developed without proper safeguards. Imagine powerful weapons making decisions on their own, or new diseases emerging from unintended consequences. That's why it's important to carefully consider the ethical and safety implications of quantum computing alongside its potential benefits. Think of it like building a powerful new tool. You can use it to build a house or break things. It depends on your intentions. Quantum computing is the same way. We need to make sure the rules are in place to use this technology for good and avoid any unintended harm. So quantum computing is this super powerful tool, but with great power comes great responsibility, right? That's why we need to think carefully about the ethical and legal implications before we dive headfirst into this new world. Imagine developing a cure for a disease using a quantum computer, but then someone uses the same technology to create a deadly virus. That's the kind of scenario we want to avoid. Here's what needs to happen. First, we need clear guidelines about how to use quantum computing ethically. This means thinking about privacy, security, and how this technology might affect the environment and society as a whole. Basically, we want to make sure the good outweighs the bad. We also need to develop regulations to keep up with the rapid pace of quantum advancements. Think of it like traffic rules for this powerful new technology. 
These rules need to be flexible enough to adapt as things change, but strong enough to prevent misuse. International cooperation is key here so everyone's on the same page. Another important piece of the puzzle is transparency. The public needs to understand what's going on with quantum computing, both the good and the potential risks. This way, we can have an informed conversation about how to develop this technology in a way that benefits everyone. Companies like IBM are already thinking about these issues. They're developing quantum computers, but also working with others to explore the ethical implications. It's a good model to follow, kind of like how we developed safety regulations alongside advancements in other powerful technologies. Remember the CRISPR gene editing tool? That's a great example. It has the potential to cure diseases, but it also raises ethical concerns. We need to learn from these situations and make sure quantum computing goes down a responsible path. With careful planning and open communication, we can harness the power of quantum computing for good.